Good morning all. Last week, I was doing shopping alone. My wife sat in the car fuming as I did not stop at the roadside for her to buy some orchids. I thought it was just waste of money, especially when COVID-19 is creating havoc in my beautiful island. I entered the supermarket and was busy trying to choose a jar of olives from the many manufacturer's jar displayed on the shelves when I overheard a child of seven or eight years old say to his mother, why can't we just buy? Tell Dad to send the money from Australia. I think you wanted the box of Cadbury chocolate, which was quite expensive. The mother retorted, yes, your father works in a farm in the hot sun, picking apples and grapes. We cannot be wasting money. We need to build a house. And remember, you want a room full of Spider-Man toys, don't you? When your father comes, he will bring lots of chocolates. First, we build our house and we build it strong. Remember what happened in the last hurricane? The child nodded his head and they moved to the next hours. I could infer from the child's expression that something devastating might have happened to their house for which the father had gone to Australia. Now, why do I tell you this story? It's to show how Pacific Seasonal Labor Scheme is benefiting some families in Fiji by raising their standard of living. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. My name is Mohammed Alim and I am from the fertile and lush islands of Fiji. I did my postgraduate diploma in literature and language from the University of Fiji. Currently, I'm pursuing masters in literature and language from the University of Fiji. I'll be deliberating on the theme, Pacific Seasonal Labor Scheme. Approximately 25,000 seasonal workers from the Pacific are employed in Australia and New Zealand each year. The majority come from Tonga, Vanuatu, and Samoa, and participate in either Australia's Seasonal Worker Program, SWP, or New Zealand's recognized Seasonal Employer, RSE, scheme. Tonga, Vanuatu, and Samoa also have the largest number of workers as a proportion of their labor force. In Tonga's case, almost 15% of the workforce participated in the SWP or RSE last year. The numbers of Pacific seasonal workers in Australia and New Zealand at any given time vary, influenced by the harvest seasons for different products. As of May 2020, there were approximately 7,000 Pacific seasonal workers in Australia under the Seasonal Workers Program and 9,300 in New Zealand under the recognized Seasonal Employer Scheme. The Pacific Seasonal Labor Scheme is categorized as follows. Recognized Seasonal Employer, RSE program in New Zealand, and Seasonal Work Program, that is SWP in Australia. The aim of this paper is to discuss, firstly, the characteristics of Pacific Seasonal Labor Scheme, and secondly, to elaborate on financial impacts on supplier nations. Introduction. The island economy, economies in the Pacific have experienced fragile economic growth and limited structural change compared to the typical economy in the rest of developing Asia. Remoteness from major centers of population and economic activity and low economic density have contributed to these poor outcomes. To mitigate the impact of these constraints, bilateral arrangements with Australia and New Zealand over the last decade have given workers from these countries an, an opportunity to use seasonal labor migration to assess higher paying, more dynamic and diverse labor markets. These managed secular migration schemes are designed to benefit employers in labor intensive sectors, the workers from the Pacific that have limited opportunities for wage earning employment in their own countries and the communities that send the workers. Literature search. The literature for this paper included research, journal articles, policy papers, opinion pieces, media releases, and books that could be sourced electronically. It was limited to material that had been written since 2000 and to the geographic regions. To start with keyword searches using Google Scholar were used. The keywords included seasonal migration, Pacific seasonal labor scheme, 
temporary migration, guest workers, labor mobility, and economic development. Once sourced, is each piece of literature was then keyword searched for information related to each of the aspects to be covered in the paper. The limitation of the paper is that no check was made to assess the reliability of the sources. Um, let us move on to the characteristics of the uh, Pacific Seasonal Labor Scheme. The Pacific Seasonal Labor Scheme commenced on 1st July 2018. The scheme helps meet employer worker demand in rural and regional Australia and New Zealand. It enables citizens of participating countries to take up low and semi-skilled work opportunities in rural and regional Australia and New Zealand for up to three years. The Pacific Seasonal Labour Scheme focuses on sectors with projected employment growth in Australia and New Zealand, and it is employer sponsored. It requires labor market testing to ensure Australians and New Zealanders have priority for local jobs and contains protections to safeguard against worker exploitation. The Pacific Seasonal Labor Scheme contributes to the economic development of participating Pacific Island countries in Timor-Leste by providing access to work opportunities in the Australia, New Zealand agriculture sector and accommodation sector in selected locations. The Pacific Seasonal Labor Scheme offers access to a reliable returning workforce when there's not enough local Australian or New Zealanders labor to meet the seasonal demand. The Seasonal Migration Scheme recognizes the need to let employers in the labor intensive accommodation, agriculture, horticulture, and viticulture, that is wine industries, recruit workers. A balance between the needs of these industries for seasonal labor to help expand production and exports and the need to provide employment opportunities for workers from the Pacific. The countries participating in Pacific Seasonal Labor Scheme are Fiji, Kiribati, Nauru, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Timor-Leste, Tonga, Tuvalu, and Vanuatu. Ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to the financial impacts on supplier nations under the scheme, how it affects the income. Income earning opportunities are one of the key wins of temporary labor mobility schemes such as the Pacific Seasonal Labor Scheme. Income generation is the primary motivation for participation in the scheme. Some Pacific Island country workers may take, only take home Australian uh, dollars of 4,170 in combined remittances and savings. In Australia, gross earnings for a six month contract in 2016 averaged an Australian dollar 19 to $20,000 for Tongans and Nivanuatu and Australian dollar $14,000 for other Pacific Island country workers. Remittances. There's no doubt that even as they may vary between Pacific Island countries, earnings from Pacific seasonal labor scheme employment are significant. This situation probably remains true even when opportunities, opportunity costs relating to lost wages and or labor in home countries are accounted for a high proportion of earnings go into remittances. Remittances are generally used to meet the household's immediate needs and often aid multiple relatives. In addition to cash remittances, seasonal workers often remit goods or return with them. Certainly, some of these goods may improve short-term development outcomes. For example, chainsaw may make it easier to clear land and build houses. Savings goals. Overall, seasonal workers appear to have similar aspirations for their savings regardless of nationality, which mirror tends from wider Pacific remittances flows as well as seasonal worker schemes elsewhere. Education, consumption, welfare gains, that is improved housing and small businesses are all common goals. There has been some evidence of participation in seasonal work leading to investment in small businesses, community development projects, and possibly in increased agricultural productivity. 
such investments and projects appear to have been most successful when they were encouraged by community leaders or made a condition of participation in the scheme. Agriculture skills, and skills losses and food security. This is one negative impact uh, on, the, um, on the nations who send labors. It is evident that the loss of mainly male labor may well reduce agricultural production and thus challenge short-term food security, which may have financial impacts on the supplier nation. Um, to move on, uh, the COVID-19 crisis has imposed serious challenges on seasonal workers from Pacific Island countries. Border closures by both destinations and origin countries aimed at slowing the pandemic have left thousands of seasonal workers stranded in Australia and New Zealand. Although early concerns related to the legality of their stay have been addressed by visa extensions and redeployment options, lack of work remains an issue in some areas given the seasonal nature of employment. Data from the World Bank phone survey on how COVID-19 has affected these workers suggests substantial and varying impacts on employment, earnings, and remittances. Domestic border closures and the dependence of workers on their employers to apply for visa extensions and redeployment, especially in Australia, and transportation to new workplaces in both Australia and New Zealand present additional challenges to the continuation of their employment and expose them to risk of exploitations and distress. The workers' distinct living and conditions often in crowded spaces, together with their low levels of income, make them particularly vulnerable to infections and consequent economic hardships. For the scheme workers and their families, the primary driver for participation in the scheme is an economic one. Uh, the scheme Income is now factored into the lives of many households and contributes to the economic and social well being. Savings are used to support daily living needs, pay for children's education, improve standards of housing, contribute to the church as well as family and community events, and invest in agriculture and other small businesses. In conclusion, New labor mobility programs between Pacific Island countries and Australia and New Zealand have been beneficial for host countries in a number of ways, which I have already discussed. Labor from the Pacific has, has not only assisted in filling shortages in labor intensive industries such as horticulture, but it has also increased productivity levels compared with what was possible with traditional sources of seasonal labor. Specific studies in the Pacific have shown positive development outcomes for households supplying workers, their communities, and their home countries. These are my references. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening.